Line 1. Hello and welcome to the Foxcans EVE Online 101 tutorial video for beginners. Line 2. This video is designed to instruct new players in EVE on the various major races in this game as well as the general design of the ships that each race is known for making. Line 3. Although each major race has a very large storyline in EVE Online, this video will not be going into much detail about each race's background. Line 4. It is important to understand the four major races and how their ships are designed as these ships are the basic building blocks for every ship in EVE Online. The majority of pilots, especially in their earlier career, will be flying the same ships as their races are contributed to designing. Line 5 The four major races in this game are the Amarians, Galante, Kaldari, and the Mimitars. Line 6 each race has certain ships in their arsenal that generally follow certain specialization guidelines. Not every ship, not even every combat ship, follows the exact specialization that their race is known for designing. But this video will be going over the basic ship's specialization of each race. Line 7 All ships have bonuses that can be viewed in their description. It is always important to understand that these bonuses indicate how a ship is specialized in addition to its normal attributes. When fitting a ship, it is important to make use of the ship's bonuses with the modules that complement them. Not doing so will result in a player wasting the ISK to have ever purchased the ship. Line 8 The Amarians are probably the easiest to explain as their ships are designed to do a couple things and do a couple things well. The Amarian ships are nearly all, if not all, designed for armor tanking. This means that their resistances and HP are focused for tanking more damage on their armor layer compared to their shield or hull layer. Line 9. This usually means that when fighting an Amarian ship, a pilot might be able to blow through an Amarian ship's shields quite easily, but upon reaching their armor layer, the amount of damage being taken will be dramatically reduced, as well as the amount of HP on the armor layer will be dramatically increased. Line 10. Out of the four major races, the Amarian ships are the only ships that focus on laser weapon systems. All lasers can only do thermal and EM damage. Again, since not every race's ships follow the same specialization skills, not all Marian ships will give bonuses to laser weapon systems. Line 11. The nice thing about laser weapon systems is the fact that lasers can hot swap their frequency crystals without any downtime in doing so. This allows ships carrying lasers to change the frequency at which their lasers can fire almost immediately. Lasers also do not require ammunition, which can end up spoiling even the most experienced pilots. Line 12. The alternate specialization bonuses for the Amarian ships are to the ship's capacitor, as well as bonuses to energy transfer arrays, which allows some Amarian ships to transfer their capacitor to another ship of their choice. Line 13 One of the major drawbacks to the Amarian ships is that they are generally slower than all the other ships. Line 14 The Galante ships would probably be the next easiest race to explain. The Galante ship's main firepower usually comes from drones, which are small, unarmed, remotely controlled fighters that are released into space from the drone bay of a ship to do the bidding of the ship's pilot. Line 15 Additionally, the Galante ships focus on hybrid turrets, and in rare occasions, missiles. You will usually find Galante ships' bonuses either focusing on the drones or the hybrid turrets. Few Galante ships focus on both at the same time. Line 16 Hybrid turrets either come in the form of railguns or blasters. Railguns are the most common weapon system for the Galante as it gives enough range needed for PvE combat situations or player vs environment. PvP or player vs player is usually done with blasters which are some of the most devastating weapons in the game but lack any sort of range and thus unless Galante ships are able to close in on their target generally don't have the firepower needed to make as much of a difference in PvP as many of the other ships could. Line 17 all hybrid guns do thermal and kinetic damage and unlike lasers require ammunition that do not have a hot swap ability, which means it takes 10 seconds every time a pilot wishes to change the ammunition currently loaded in the ship's guns. Drones on the other hand can do a variety of damage depending on what kind of drones the ship is carrying. Drones also have the ability to have special abilities such as webifying, tracking disruption, and more. Line 18 
Galante ships are difficult early on for young pods, as to do enough damage to be of real value means having the ability to launch as many drones as possible, which in the everyday situation for young pods is 5, which requires the skill drones at level 5. This becomes very important when Galante pods can start flying cruisers, as the cruisers have a big enough drone bay for 5 or more drones. Line 19 Galante ships also focus on adding resistance and HP on their armor layer. This is very similar to the Amarians. However, at the price for being more versatile than the Amarians usually means that the Galante ships can never armor tank quite as well as the Amarian ships. Line 20 Galante ships' alternate bonuses focus on the ability to increase the ship's ability to repair its own armor layer and bonuses to remote repair other ships. Line 21 Kaldari ships are definitely different ships altogether. Although many of their ships primarily focus on rockets and missile bays, other focus on the ability to do high amount of damage from an extremely exceptional distance with railguns. Line 22. Missiles and rockets are extremely different from any of the other weapon systems. Instead of having an optimal range to hit targets as associated with advanced combat of triangular velocity, missiles and rockets have a speed at which they travel, a specified flight time, and if they make it to their target, never miss. Missiles and rockets also have different types of warheads, which allows the pilot to load in different rockets and missiles to do EM, thermal, kinetic, or explosive damage. The drawback to rockets and missiles is that such weapons can be shot down with defender missiles, can sometimes take a long period of time to reach their target, and are expensive for new players to afford compared to other types of ammunition. Line 24 Kaldari ships focus on tanking on their shield layer, which makes them radically different from most other ships. Many of their ships make for great passive shield repair ships, assuming they are fitted correctly, allowing to worry less about the capacitor and active modules needed to repair a ship's damage. This combined with the fact that missile and rocket bays don't require a capacitor makes for an excellent combination. Line 25 A common misconception with Kaldari ships is that they focus heavily on shield boosters, which if used would likely end in a ship running out of its capacitor fairly quickly. Shield boosters are generally only used when there are other support ships nearby to help transfer capacitor along with the shield transporters to the tanking Kaldari ship. Most fleets would opt for heavy armor tankers and remote armor repair support ships. Line 26 Kaldari ships alternate bonuses include the ability to use shield transporters and energy transfer arrays. Line 26 I have chosen Mimitar as the last ships to go over as they are generally the hardest to explain. Line 28 Unlike any of the other ships in the game, Mimitar ships are extremely fast, which can help taper off a bit of incoming damage from other ships. They also focus on projectile weapon systems. Line 29 The projectile weapon systems either have a very short or very long optimal range, mainly depending on what type of projectile weapon the ship is using. Projectile weapons can do a great deal of damage with not as many drawbacks. They, like missile bays, are able to, to switch different types of ammunition changing what kind of damage they are doing and do not require a capacitor in order to fire the weapon. However, unlike missiles, the projectile ammunition does two different types of damage, do not have a travel time to the target, and can't be shot down. The different ammunition can change the optimal range of the projectile weapon system. This last characteristic is similar to hybrid and laser weapons. Line 30 Mimitar ships are also very generous of how many guns they are able to fit on a single ship. However, the ships in general are unable to tank as well as the other races' ships, and different ships in the Mimitar arsenal tank differently with some focusing more on their shield layer, while others focus more on their armor layer. Line 31 This makes Mimitar ships generally a little harder to succeed in PvE with, since PvE is all about mitigating damage and outlasting your enemy. However, Mimitar ships make some of the best PvP ships and are more versatile than any other race as they are able to fulfill a variety of roles. Line 32 Mimitar alternate bonuses focus around tracking link efficiency, shield transporters, and shield maintenance bots. Line 33 Well that completes this episode of the Fosslands EVE Online 101 tutorial video. I hope you will join us for our next episode.